gladly, faithfully. We thank you, Lord, for this privilege to be in the house of the Lord one more time. Thank you. Thank you for your presence. Thank you for this privilege. And all the people of God said, Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, praise the Lord, saints. Hallelujah. He's worthy to be praised. Yes. How many are chasing after God tonight? Woo-hoo. I am yes. chasing after you. Hallelujah. Woo.
that's why we say, I want God. God. I chase God. I chase God. Because I love you. Because I love I'm you. I'm going to chase you. Forever. I chase God. I chase God. I want God. I want God. Because I love you. Because I love you. I'm going to chase, I'll chase you. you forever. Okay. I chase God. I chase God. I want God. I want God. I chase God. I chase God. I want God. I want God. In the morning, I chase God. I chase God. At the noon day, I chase God. I want God. On my job, I chase, I chase God. God. I want God. I want God. I want God. Because I love you. Because I love you. I'll chase you forever. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Do I have any God chasers in here tonight? Y'all. Y'all a little quiet for me. All right. I got some God chasers in the house. Hallelujah. 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 If you don't mind, I want you to everybody stand on your feet. And I want you to go and greet somebody that you didn't come to church with. And then I want all of y'all that's seated in the back to move up some. We promise we're not going to bite tonight. We promise. Now tomorrow might be different, but tonight you good. so glad to see you on tonight. Amen. Glad that you are in the house for this, our first women's empowerment. Amen. Amen. We are so excited. Amen. We give honor and praise, of course, to she who shall bring the message tonight. Y'all help me celebrate Pastor Cheryl Carter. Amen. 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 And to she who shall bring the word on tomorrow afternoon. Y'all help me celebrate Elder Lisa Brown. 
Amen. Amen. And amen. Amen. We are excited about what God is doing. Thankful for our Akron family that has come in. There was an accident on 71, and so they were delayed. But we thank God that they are here with us now. Amen. Amen. My assignment tonight is to give the statement of purpose. And um, uh, as you see, I don't have not one note in front of me because I just really wanted to talk from my heart for just a moment. Um, I am excited about what God is doing. Well, I don't know enough to be excited. Okay, so let me help you a little more. We are sitting in the fifth month of the year 2015. Amen. This is going to go over two heads, but the rest of y'all are going to catch it. We are sitting in the month of grace in the year that represents triple grace. Okay, I got three people that got it. God allowed you to get to this fifth month in this year of triple grace and all the hell that you've been through leading up to this point is about to pay off for you. See, the enemy thought, the enemy thought he had you. He thought he had you in January when you didn't know how you was going to pay the gas bill. He thought he had you in February when Valentine's Day came and you didn't have no boot. He thought he had you in March when you didn't get the job that you want. He thought he had you in April when you didn't know how you was going to pay them taxes and those bills. But God allowed you to get all the way to the month of grace so that he can bless you. And so he told us, he told Pastor Cheryl and I to do this tonight, to bring women who wanted the more of God who knew that there had to be more to this thing than just going to church Sunday in and Sunday out. He wanted us to gather some women that understood there's a whole nother place in him. And so our theme scripture, our theme for the weekend is celebrating our past while pursuing our destiny. And tonight, somebody say tonight. Tonight. Tonight we come to celebrate. We didn't just come to celebrate the good stuff, but we came to celebrate the fact that I'm a survivor. We came to celebrate the fact that I'm an overcomer. We came to celebrate the fact that I wasn't supposed to make it. I should have lost my mind by now. I should have been crazy by now. I should have threw in the towel by now. But guess what? God kept me and I celebrate him tonight. And so as senior pastor at Kingdom Grace Fellowship Church where Jesus Christ is what? I encourage you tonight not to leave this house the same. Matter of fact, just look at your sister and tell her you, and you men, y'all, y'all, y'all can catch on too. We're so thankful for the men that are in the house tonight because they are working and we thank God for them. But look, look, I, I want you to look at your sister real good. Look at somebody real good. Look her in her face. And say, sis, tonight, tonight is your new beginning. Okay. <laughs> okay, see. See, we, the problem with some of us is we've been in church so much and we've heard this stuff so much that we really don't believe it. But I need just about 10 women that have made up in their mind, I'm going to get something out of this weekend. I didn't just come to church on a Friday night just to see who was going to be there, and what they was going to have on it, who was going to sing. But I came seeking after something and I'm not leaving until I get what I came for. That is our statement of purpose. Amen. 
bless the name of the Lord. I'm certainly excited about my new beginning. Are you? Amen. It's my birthday. Happy birthday to me. Hallelujah. Happy birthday to you too. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, it's giving time. Hallelujah. Amen. If I can ask some of the gentlemen, if you don't mind, carrying the trays for us. going to do one offering and God is going to bless whatever you give. Amen. 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 We not we want to move into the service yeah. and we want to make sure to give Pastor Cheryl the opportunity to take us a little bit higher. So if you would, please, whatever you had intended to give, whatever the Lord had laid on your heart, please get that in your hand now. And when you have your offering in your hand, if you would please stand. declaration here at Kingdom Grace Fellowship so if you would bear with us I promise you I promise you it's going to bless you I promise you it's going to bless you so I'll, I'll lead and you follow if that's alright we're going to raise our offerings to the heavens and if you repeat after me because we understand our biblical responsibility as worshipers we bring our hearts to God recognizing that we return to him in our tithes and offerings. Where our money is, is where our heart is. We pay the tithe because we owe God our vow. We give our offerings sowing seeds to reap fruit. We sow into our pastors okay, to reap a prophet's reward. We sow into our churches to reap kingdom benefits as we cheerfully participate in giving and receiving we have from the Lord jobs and better jobs raises and bonuses benefits, sales and increase commissions sorry, favorable settlements estates and inheritances rebates and returns checks in the mail Gifts and, gifts and surprises, bills paid off, bills paid off. And, bills and bills reduced, blessings and increase. Blessings and increase. I, am I am out of debt. My needs are met. Needs are met. I've, got I've got plenty more to put in store. Put in store. Thank you, Lord, Thank you, Lord for, teaching for teaching me how to be a godly, be a godly giver and receiver. Giver. Amen. Come from where you are. but I'm certainly ready for the word. Y'all hungry? Amen. Amen. Not physically, but we have a spiritual thirst and we're looking for God on tonight. Amen. 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 I'm going to turn it back to our apostle, Pastor Collins, to introduce our speaker. Amen. 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 I am just excited, delighted. Let me see how many more <laughs> adjectives I could come up with. I met Pastor Cheryl, I don't even remember how many years ago. We happened to be at a conference when I first met her. And I just immediately thought, wow, what a stunning lady. And then as God would have it, she 
ended up working at North Central State College where my daughter was working at the time. And so I had a chance to encounter her again. And again, I thought, wow, what a stunning lady. And then I had the opportunity to hear her preach. And then I said, what a preaching, stunning lady. Amen. So we are excited. She is no stranger, certainly, to anybody in Mansfield. Whether you've seen her picture on the billboard or heard her on the radio or, or been in a, a service or something, she's no stranger to this city. And to those of you from Akron, I just want you to meet my friend. Amen. She um, currently works still at North Central State College. I won't try to tell you what her title is because I'll mess that up. But she works real closely with the president of the college, Dr. Dory Diaz. Amen. She is the associate pastor of the Mount Sinai Baptist Church, where Dr. Larry Rawl serves as senior pastor. Most importantly, she is saved, Holy Ghost filled, and loves the Lord. And so after I believe our praise team is coming, or somebody's coming with a sermonic selection. After that, the next voice that you will hear will be that of Pastor Cheryl Carter. I encourage you to open up your hearts and open up your minds and receive what God has given this dynamic woman of God. Amen.
listen. I may make mistakes sometimes, but I love you. Forever. Yep. I love you. Forever. Maybe this is you. I may miss the mark sometimes, but I love you. Yep. I love you. Forever. I love you. Forever. I may make mistakes sometimes, but I love you. Forever. Yep. I love you. Worship the Lord. Hallelujah. Worship the Lord. Come on, worship him. Worship him. Worship him. He is the great I am. He is the ancient of days, the bread of life. He is your beginning and your ending, your alpha and your omega, the first and the last. He is the bread of life. He is the water from which you will never be thirsty again. He is, he is the truth, the way, and the life. He is our all in all. He is worthy to be worshipped forever and ever and ever and ever. He is worthy. Uh, he's bigger than the problem you came in here with. He's worthy. He's bigger than that bad news you got on yesterday. He's worthy. He's bigger than the loss of the loved one, the grief that has held you down, the debt that has tried to destroy you, the loved ones that have tried to betray you. He's bigger than all. Put your hand on the heart and tell God that you love him. That you love him forever. Follow the musicians. Go and sing the song to him like nobody else is in the building. Because this is between you and him. Uh, you've got to go vertical tonight. Uh, it's not about the people in the pew beside you. It's about the God that gave you life. Uh, ah, God. He's bigger than the doctor's report. Ah, oh, God. Uh, he's bigger than that wayward son. He's bigger than that estranged daughter. Ah, uh, he's bigger than that lost dream. Oh, God. Uh, whatever you come up with, uh, he's bigger than that. He's bigger than that. He's bigger than that. He's bigger than that. Love him tonight. Oh God. I'm not talking about. I'm not talking about that fluffy stuff that changes when the wind blows. I'm I'm talking about the kind of love. Oh God. That Job had. Though he had slain me yet. Yet but I'm serving him. Oh, regardless of what's going on in my life. It's you, God, and no one else, no one else, no one else, no one else. Hallelujah, Jesus. If you think that's a little bit too much, you ain't been through nothing. Oh, God. 
Some of us, when we thought that the jump was over, it showed up five times. It since we thought it would be over, it showed up five more times. We didn't been to hell and back five more times. When the preacher said the struggle was over, we went to hell again and came to some of us think it's a perpetual ride. But when God brings you out, you can't help but get it crazy. ain't walked a mile in my moccasins. I don't care what you think about me. Cause I'm the walking dead. Ain't nothing left. Ain't nothing left. If he don't breathe through a sister. If he doesn't exhale so I can inhale. It's a wrap. Ah. Uh, you look like you came to hear three points in a poem. You in the wrong place. Ah, God. If you looking for church as usual, and a regular kind of sermon, leave now. So you don't mess up the video. I'm trying to tell you, some of us are here for kingdom business. Some of us came for an encounter. Not to hear a sermon that's delivered with all the eloquence of man. But some of us came to get a word from God. Ah, uh, if that's you, throw your hands up and love on him just one more time. If you came for him to speak to your situation, ah, uh, tell him you can't wait for what he has for you. If you came, uh, to put a period on the end of a run-on sentence. Oh, that was free. That was good right there. If you came to put a period on the end of a run-on sentence, lift your hands up and tell God you want to make it over tonight. You want to finish it tonight. You want a word to settle it tonight because you got destiny to pursue. Ain't no more time for the dumb. Ain't no more energy for the ridiculous. We've got to go higher, higher, higher. Oh, God. If you're tired, have a seat. If you feel like you didn't work too hard already and we haven't even gotten to the intro, have a seat. The overseer and I talked about this. She said, what are you, what's in your spirit? I said, well, it ain't the usual thing. I, I don't feel like I'm going to be dropping no regular sermon. I'm going to drop some words, some nuggets of truth, uh, and the hungry will grab them. I got notes, but I'm going to talk to you out of my spirit. Sometimes we got to slow a thing down, put the hoop on the side, so that you can have your spirit man fed. Not your flesh so you can jump. Not your mind because you heard them drop some kind of sentence or scripture you had never heard before. And you're like, oh my God, that was good. But I'm talking about a night of transformation. I'm talking about you getting a rhema word from God that you know you are not the same. You ain't just making it up. You ain't just saying it. Because the preacher said it, but you know you've been changed. Oh, God, you may be seated. I'm going to lean into this thing. If you in a hurry, leave now. 
we came on Friday while the folk lined up to get fish dinners we came to hear from God ah uh, cause this is the this is the bread from which we eat where we'll never hunger again this is the water from which we drink where we will never thirst again thank you Jesus oh God let me lean into this is that alright I do give honor to God who is my life to my Lord and Savior Yeshua HaMashiach Oh, God, to the spirit of Christ, the revealer of all truth, to the great shepherd of this house, overseer Renee Collins. Come on, put your hands together and bless the woman of God. Bless the woman of God. Anointed and appointed to raise up a generation. Ah, God with renewed vim and vigor for the things of God, radically sold out for Christ. Why? Because he is king. Ah, oh, God. To my friend, Dr. Sprinkle, to the first man who is not in the building tonight, amen. To my friend, I, and I apologize, Brother Leon. I just want to, I love you all, your family to all, my friend Elder Linda Russell's in the house. Amen to Elder Lisa Brown, the great woman of God who's going to drop some truth on you tomorrow. Come on, give it up for these powerful women of God that some would say because they've been tricked by scripture that all that a woman can do is sit and be quiet in the service. Amen. Our theme tonight for this weekend is celebrating our past while pursuing our destiny. Is it all right? Can I talk to you? Can we lean into this thing? I, I would recommend that not only that you get your Bible out, I recommend that you find some paper. Oh, I'm sorry. That must be baby boomer language. You might want to pop open your notes app on your phone or something. <laughs> your iPad. You know, whatever technology you got going on, your Apple Watch, I don't know. But you're going to need to take note because we don't know when the CD or the DVD is going to be available. Because <laughs> some stuff you need to get over and over. Can I say that? See, you think that it's just about somebody trying to sell something. That's not it. Some word, you can't get all of it on the first go round some stuff you got to get in your spirit by repetition now you need to know none of us gonna preach the same message every Sunday so the best thing you can do is use the media that God has made available so that you can get the word to drop 17 inches from here to here you didn't catch that did you catch that to get it in your spirit. Ah, uh, because when you get it in your spirit, you own it. Mm, I'm moving on. And so tonight, I want to talk to you about the undeniable, irrefutable, indisputable power of a woman. Now, you might be saying to yourself, how is that relevant? to the theme. I'm going to get you there. I always do, but I'm going to take you on a tour. Is that all right? I'm going to take you on a tour. And so a few thoughts before we begin. Overseer said to you that you have been brought into the fifth month. Five is the number of grace in the year 2015, which represents triple grace. And that tonight was the night of your what? Your new beginning. If you didn't write that down, you need to write that down. Tonight is the night of my new beginning. Beginning. Now the Holy Spirit is going to tie all this together. I just need you to be flexible. Be flexible. 
Now, why is new beginning relevant when you're talking about celebrating your past? I like that. Stay with me. Why is that relevant? Well, first of all, your past didn't begin when you were born. So when you start talking about what happened in your past, the natural inclination is to cover the years back to your birth. Uh, my mother and father uh, almost chose to abort me. I was born breech. I was born to a, a mother who used crack. I was, I was uh, abused as a young child, elementary school age. I was abandoned. I was a, a, a foster child. I was adopted. I was mistreated by my siblings. I, the list goes on and on and on. I made horrible mistakes. I started smoking at 12. Now I'm just making this up. This is how rumors get started. Don't go out telling nobody this is my story. I'm just covering the gamut. I flunked out of school. I was a teenage mother. The list goes on. See, you think that's your past. You didn't begin when you were conceived in your mother's womb. That was not your beginning. Some of you know that. Others don't. I'm going to tell you why. Because in Jeremiah, he said, I knew you before. You were formed in your mother's womb. Uh, there's another translation that says, I'm still talking about your beginning being relevant to celebrating your past. Stay with me. The, another translation says, before you were an embryo, I knew you. So if he knew you before you were formed in your mama's womb, then you had to always be here. I'm going to try that again. If he knew you, and what does the Bible say in Genesis 1 and 1? That in the beginning, what? God. Come on now. In the beginning, God. It doesn't matter what happened after that. The point is, he was the beginning. And so, oh my God. And so if he knew you, before you were in your mama's womb and he was the beginning, you had to be there too. I'm going to help you with that. You say, well, that sounds like a stretch, Pastor Cheryl. No, it's not. <laughs> the Lord told me to tell you that's where you began in his spirit. So if he was always here, <laughs> so were you. So when we talk about celebrating our past, it goes back further than November 21st, 1963. Don't try to do the math. You fill in the blank. Your beginning goes back further than 1944. Uh, if he was the beginning, and he knew you before you were formed, then you were always here or there, wherever he was. Why? Because you existed in his spirit. And if you didn't write that down, you better grab it because I'm going to work that thing. I'm going to work that thing. And so why is it important to celebrate your past? Well, God wanted me to elevate your sights tonight because your past uh, is his beginning. Your past is your beginning that began in him. Watch this, watch this, watch this. Your past is your beginning that began in him. When he was and he always was, you were always in him. Watch this. So when you celebrate your past, you have to go back to the beginning. I'm going to say that for you one more time. You've got to go back to the beginning, not your natural beginning, but the beginning. Why? Because that's where it started for you. Like, 
Well, I don't see where the power relevance is. Watch this. Because God sent me to tell you that your power is in your beginning. I'm going to help you with that. Your power. Oh, God. Your power. I'm not talking about your natural might. You better tap into your spiritual genealogy. Your power that is to be exercised in the earth is in your beginning. That's why you have to go back. That's why you have to celebrate your past. Not your natural past, your supernatural genealogy. You have to go back to the beginning. Open your Bible to Genesis chapter 1 and look at verse 1 and read the first four words and then stop. When you have it, say amen. Uh, All together, the first four words ready read God in the beginning God watch this so if you came out of his spirit you could read that to say in the beginning Cheryl in the beginning Mother Walker in the beginning Dr. Sprinkle now go to verse 26 I'm taking you somewhere verse 26 and I'm going to read this for you in the beginning God in God what he said let us make man in our image after our likeness And let them, let them, let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the fowl of the air, over the cattle, over all the earth, over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. He said, let us make Adam, male, female, them, let us make them in our image after our likeness, let them, we're not talking about men tonight, we're talking about the female expression of God, which is you, my sisters, let her have dominion so in the beginning where you already existed in the spirit of God his plan was always for you to have dominion stay with me dominion meaning to subjugate to rule to reign to overtake Let her have dominion, dominion, dominion. Watch this, watch this, watch this. Now go to the theme scripture for tonight, 2 Timothy. Are you still with me? I promise I'm going to get you there. 2 Timothy. Chapter 1, verse 5 through 7. And so here Paul is talking to Timothy and he's remembering the faith in him and he's trying to stir him up for the work of ministry and he's calling into his remembrance the gift watch this when you look at the scripture in verse 6 he says I put thee in remembrance that thou stir up the gift of God now when you study this out You will find that most resources will tell you that he's referring to the ministry gift that was imparted into Timothy when Paul laid hands on him. But the Lord told me to tell you tonight that the gift was himself. I'm working a thing. You might want to write that down. Verse 6. That the gift in you is God himself oh God stay with me the gift in you is God himself now that stands to reason because if you were in him in the beginning and the way that he birthed you into existence was essentially to speak you into existence then whatever was in him that you have his essence in you he is the gift he is the gift look at 
at your neighbor and say, God is the gift. He is the gift. He is the gift. And with him being the gift and him resident in you and you coming out of him, he told me to tell you that not only is your power in your beginning, which is the reason you have to go back, but your purpose is in your beginning. You started here and you started on this journey, but you got derailed by a whole bunch of stuff that was not of God. And he's saying tonight, go back to your beginning because that's where your power is. That's where your purpose is. That's where your destiny has been defined. I see. Some of you want the three points in a poem. I'm trying to make a deposit. Uh, uh, And so, in John 1, he says, in the beginning was the word. The word was with God and the word was God. And, And if Jeremiah 1 and 5 is true, then the word embodies you. I'm still helping you. You need to write that down. The word embodies me. The word embodies me. I'm about to take you to the next page. I'm about to take you to the next page. Uh, Turn to Jeremiah chapter 33. Jeremiah You know what? Pause on that. Put your finger there when you get there. The Holy Spirit said, take you back to 2 Timothy. I've got to show you something. In 2 Timothy chapter 5, verse 7. In 2 Timothy, I'm sorry, chapter 1, verse 7. Watch this. After he talks to him about stirring up the gift, here's what he says in verse 7. He says, for God hath not given us the spirit of fear. This is a familiar passage of scripture. Watch this. He's been talking about the gift. What is the purpose of the gift? Whether it's a ministry gift or God himself, it is for you to do something in the earth. Not for you to sit on the gift, but the gift gives you purpose. It is for you to do something in the earth. It is the reason for which you have been created. So after Paul speaks to the gift, he says, God has not given you a spirit of fear. Why? Because that's the thing that blocks you from activating your gift for kingdom purposes. The Lord said, That's why you have to go back to your beginning. Watch this. Because fear is the one thing. Every excuse you make about why you can't do what God has told you to do is rooted in fear. Paul said he didn't give us a spirit of fear. Everything that's got you stuck is some decision you made Uh, rooted in fear you're like pastor Cheryl how can that be because if you in a bad destructive relationship you said yes to that joker because you was afraid of being lonely if that monthly check you write to the auto loan place is choking the life out of you you made that financial decision based on fear afraid of what people would thought if you took the car your auntie wanted to give you with the rust on the door oh I'm on your street now uh, if the credit cards are trying to choke the life out of you you made purchases beyond your capacity to pay cause you are afraid to just be you you need to dress a certain way and perpetrate fear Oh, the list goes on. 
You can come up with your own list. But the reason I'm lingering here is because Paul didn't give Timothy a laundry list of stuff. He said the one thing that jams you up, not the symptoms, the root of why you don't walk in your purpose, of why your gift's not activated, of why you are no closer to your destiny, the root is fear. And he said, God has not given you a spirit of fear. Ah, but then he comes back with the triple threat. He said, he didn't give you fear, but he gave you power, power, dunamis power, where we get the word dynamite, because when you make a serious impact, you blowing up some junk. Oh, that's a, that's a message for another day, but he gave you power, love, and a sound mind. Now watch this. When you study out fear, the Greek word translated fear is timidity. Timid. How many of you has God given a vision to and you still hem on? I don't know. No. I, I can't speak like Sister Stone is so. I don't have a bachelor's, a master's, a PhD. I, oh, it's your, it ain't you. It's your cousin in them. Okay. Okay. This your cousin in them. Him horn. Uh, how many of you sitting on a gift? Everybody's hands ought to go up. Why y'all playing? I'm just saying. There's something in you he's given you to do. Oh, my God. Do you know that before you were formed in your mama's womb, when he was yet carrying you in his spirit, he saw a need through the annals of time. And he came back and said, huh, I think I need to create me a Renee Collins for that. Oh. Oh, I see that in that year 2015 when that right there is going to be an issue. I think we need an elder Linda Russell in the house. Fill in the blank. Am I helping anybody? Uh, Y'all still looking for three points in a poem. You might as well leave now. And so God said, he said, he said through Paul, he said, I didn't give you fear. I gave you power. I just want to focus right there for a minute. Power, power, uh, power. He, he says that with the power, which is from your beginning, y'all looking at me like, well, what's the power? Watch this. this. The really super religious answer that you would give is, oh, that's the Holy Spirit at work in you. I'm going to give you something in addition to that. Because see, when you have clarity about who you are and where you came from and why you are here and where you are going and how you're going to get there. I just gave you five things right there. Five, five for the month of grace in the year of triple grace. And you didn't write that down. I'm going to say it for you one more time that when you know who you are, when you know where you came from, when you know why you are here, where you are going, and what it's going to take to get there, tell me you can't stand flat-footed, unmovable. Can look the devil and all his imps in the eye and say, bring your best shot, because I ain't going down like a sissy. I know why I'm here. Is this too much extracurricular stuff for you? You getting this? I'm making a deposit. This ain't a shouting message. I'm making a deposit in you. That's why God told me to tell you your power is in your beginning. 
uh, who's the beginning? He is. So when you understand who he is, uh, then you understand you. When you understand that he is all powerful, then you don't. I'm sorry, overseer. Can I say P-U-N-K? Can I say that? When you understand that he is all powerful, you won't walk through the earth like a punk. Like somebody is running over you. You will run the joint and dominate like Paul said. Paul said, he said, all things are legal. And then he goes on to say, in clause B of that scripture, he said, but I won't let nothing dominate me. Why? Go back to your beginning, the book of beginnings. What does chapter 1 of verse 26 say? Let them have dominion. And so Paul says in your new covenant, I ain't going to let nothing have dominion over me. Why? Because we're supposed to run the joint. God is too much. So celebrating your past is about going back to the beginning. You have to understand who God is. And all his attributes. I'm not telling you that for some super religious reason. Just because I'm the preacher with the mic. I'm telling you what I know. Why? Because there was a time when I was living life like I was looking at the bottom of everybody's shoes. And then I got a revelation of 126. If I came from him, I must be like him. And whoever he is, I will pattern myself after. And if he don't do ignorance, I ain't doing ignorance. If he don't do liars, I don't do liars. If he doesn't do ungodly, unholy, and filthy, they ain't going to be in my world either. I'm trying to help you. This isn't about you trying to mentally assent to some higher place of self-esteem. That's world stuff. This is about you going back to the beginning where you came from. Y'all look like y'all want me to move on. I'm going to get you home. And so God said, your power is in your beginning and in your beginning I created you to have dominion I created you to have dominion not to move through the earth wanderless aimlessly but clarity and confidence because you are rooted and grounded in him I don't have time to take you through all of that I just needed to drop it in your spirit and here's the final thing that he told me to share with you in Jeremiah 33 when he's talking about the captivity of Judah and Israel and Jeremiah being in prison God gave him a word and he told them to tell the people he said I will cause the captivity of Judah and the captivity of Israel to return meaning to turn back and I will build them as it was at the first Uh, I'm going to give you one more in verse 11 and he thus saith the Lord again again he said again it'll be heard in this place it'll be heard in this dry desolate place in this place where the houses have been raised and there's no life in the place he said again that the voice of joy and the voice of gladness and the voice of the bridegroom and the voice of the bride and the voice of them shall say Praise the Lord of hosts, for the Lord is good. His mercy endureth forever. Why? For I will cause to return the captivity of the land as it was at the first, saith God. In other words, when you get back to your beginnings, everything's going to be all right. Ah, oh, you didn't catch that. He told Judah and Israel, he said, for all the destruction that you've been through, 
for all the desolation that you are experiencing. Number one, I haven't forgotten you because I gave life to you. I hand picked you. I chose you. My hand rests upon you. I hold you in the palm of my hand. You are the apple of my eye. I long to behold your lovely face. But you've got to return to your beginning. And when you do, I'll turn back your captivity and take you back to the glory of your original time. God is saying to you tonight, you're looking for some power outside of yourself, but it's in you because I dwell in you. It's in your beginning. And when you get clarity through him about who you are, ah, that's a seminar. And why you're here, that's another seminar. And where you're going, I hear you, Holy Ghost, because who you are is about your self-image and your self-concept. You need to write that down. Ah, God, who you are is about self-image and self-concept. Where you come from is about your heritage and your lineage, not just the natural, but the spiritual as well. Am I helping somebody? Uh, Where you came from, why you're here is about your purpose and your potential, your divine assignment. Where you're going is about vision and destiny for your life. Uh, What is it going to take to get there? It's about strategy and discipline. I hear you, Holy Ghost. So here's the rest of 2 Timothy in verse 7. He said, I've given you a sound mind. How many of you know what sound mind is? You, most folk think that's just a mind that's not on the verge of cracking up. You, most people associate that with sanity. Uh, but the word translated in the Greek for sound mind speaks to discipline. So God was saying to Timothy and to us tonight prophetically, through the voice of Paul in that book he's saying I put some stuff in you and myself because I am the greatest gift but I put you in the earth for a reason because there's issues and problems that I need you to solve you are my solution to the earth's issues the Bible says that the earth is groaning waiting for the what the manifestation of the sons of The earth is waiting for the real you to show up. Not the one that got shaped by that ignorance from your past. Oh, help me, Holy Ghost. Uh, uh, The earth is waiting for the one that God had in his spirit and intended to manifest in the first place. The one that has power, that walks in dominion, that knows why it's here, that knows the bank of resources in the kingdom that exists the real you ah god the one shaped in the image and similitude of christ watch this watch this but how do you get to the place that he ordained for you the fifth question i gave you i told you that was strategy and discipline god already provided it he said through paul to timothy he said he didn't give you fear He gave you dunamis power. He gave you love. The Greek word translated agape. And he gave you a sound mind. The word translated discipline. Meaning everything you need to get to where you have to go. uh, To do what he created you to do. Is already in you. Go back to your beginning. Stand to your feet. Stand to your feet. There's somebody in here tonight that you've been teetering on the brink. Oh, God. God has given you vision. Folk have recognized your gifts. And you keep listening to the enemy. 
causing you to shrink back. Uh, believing lies like, I'm not enough. I'm not ready yet. I don't have enough education. I don't have enough experience. I haven't done that before, God. Uh, uh, why would the people want to listen to me? Why, why would people come, would want to come to something that I put together? Somebody's teetering on the brink. It might just be one. You know you were created for greatness. You know that there's a divine call on your life. And the rest of you who don't yet know what it is, you think that's for somebody else. You wouldn't be in the earth if it wasn't you too. The enemies told you it's somebody else. Uh, but you just have a little more distance to travel than others to get the revelation that it means you too. But there's somebody on the edge and you just need pushed over. You just need to settle it tonight that you are already good enough, that you are already gifted enough, that you are already prepared enough. And now is the time God has been preparing you. He has been, he has ordained your path. He has co coordinated and choreographed everything that's necessary. If that's you, come down here now. I want to lay my hands on you. If that's you, if that's you, if that's you, if that's you, and if it's you and you holding back, who knows, tomorrow you wake up and the enemy speak one more lie to you and you just lay it all down. He just only has to give you one more lie and you're done. 